hacking Wi-Fi with the latest Wi-Fi pineapple firmware. That's right, 2.5 just released, it's epic, and we're gonna dive all into that today, this time on Hack 5. Hello and welcome to Hack5, my name is Darren Kitchen, it's your weekly dose of tech knowledge. that's a cow to the face, missed again. In any event, this is a very exciting week, I am so proud to show off the epic work that has done uh, on the Wi-Fi Pineapple recently, because this is a long time coming and this is a really sweet release, you're gonna have to grab yourself a copy of this, because with Wi-Fi Pineapple version 2.5 for the Nano and the Tetra, epic, epic rewrite of the Pine AP suite, it's just freaking sick, I can't, uh, I'm just bursting with joy. If you're not familiar, Wi-Fi Pineapple Rogue Access Point Engine, the Pine AP is the thing behind that. And uh, it's been a while since we've talked about it. We just released this firmware, uh, and I couldn't be more proud because 2.5 brings with it a complete rewrite of the Pine AP engine. And, and let me just tell you, this thing is pretty wicked, the amount of like Wi-Fi gymnastics it's doing uh, is really a thing of beauty and it shows in two really meaningful ways if you're familiar with the Wi-Fi Pineapple. The recon system is incredibly improved to the point where the amount of traffic that it's now seeing and able to process, you can just get so much more information about what's going on in the whole Wi-Fi landscape and take action on it. And then also because of the way that this Pine AP engine is now processing these frames and packets, the, the rogue access point aspect of it is just leaps and bounds more effective. Uh, so I'm just real quick, I really want to show you how to get your Wi-Fi Pineapple updated to the latest version and show off some of these features. So we're just going to go ahead and dive right in and um, do this in Linux because it's it's easy. It's l less clicking than on a Windows box, but really Windows, Mac, Linux is the same, same kind of idea. So I'm here on my Kali box and I'm just going to go ahead and grab WP. 6.sh from wifipineapple.com. So wp6.sh is just like a little helper script that uh, basically allows you to do internet connection sharing from your uh, Linux box here to your Wi-Fi Pineapple. So I'm just going to make that executable and run it. Uh, make that a little bit bigger. There we go. And essentially what this will do is allow you to set up like, okay, where's your internet coming from? Where's it going? Uh, what's your default gateway? I'm gonna do a manual setup here. And essentially what I do is just select Wi-Fi Pineapple's interface, kind of obvious in this case, because there it is at its expected IP. Where's the internet interface? Well, in my case, it's F0, yours might be WLAN0, whatever it may be. And then it's going to share the internet connection between those. It just needs to know the default gateway for that, which in my case is 192.168.86.1 because I'm doing this in VMware Fusion on a Mac with a Kali thing and hit C to connect and there we go. So now the internet going from our cute little ASCII cloud here to our laptop to our uh, Wi-Fi Pineapple and we just browse to this. So we head over to 172.16.42.1 on port 1471. If you've ever been curious why it's 1471, read a history book about King Edward IV Gotta love me some Easter eggs. And I log in here to my pineapple and I go down to advanced and you can see I'm currently running version 2.4. Simply a matter of checking, check for updates and then boom, perform the upgrade. And essentially at this point, we just sit here and wait. It downloads the firmware, checks the MD5 sums, flashes it, it's gonna take five, 10 minutes and um, we'll do like a cool little uh, Lucas wipe and then we'll be there. And just like that, the Wi-Fi Pineapple web interface kind of refreshes when it notices that, hey, I'm online and I've got a new version. So you just go through the getting started once again. Here's the awesome change log of all the bug fixes and all the epicness in this version. And uh, similar to the very first time you ever set one up, you are asked to press the button again to prove you have physical access so that you're not pineappling pineapples. Uh, next thing is to set your passwords, time zone, access point stuff. And we're gonna come back to filtering in a bit. I read and accept those, I also wrote those, and we log in. And if we go over to advanced, we can see the current version is 2.5.2. And just like that, we're running the latest and greatest. And as you can see, it's a very simple process to update. So now that we're on it, I wanna show you the very basic workflow of capturing a client using the rogue access point tools built into Pine AP. And uh, this is gonna be a very simple example of like, okay, we've been tasked with capturing a specific client uh, at on this engagement, whoever that target of interest may be. And so what we're gonna do, the, the kind of basic steps is we do some reconnaissance. We 
find out like what's in the Wi-Fi landscape. We try to identify our target, whether they're associated to something or not. And then we're going to populate our SSID pool, whether it's from our recon or that device or just automatically. And with that, we're going to set our filters specifically to that device so that we don't get any collateral damage. We're specifically getting that client. Uh, and then we'll enable the attacks, which will allow the association so that client can connect to our Wi-Fi pineapple. We're going to do our beacon responses to maintain that client. We're going to broadcast the SSID pool to entice that client. And optionally, if they are connected to an access point and we have been authorized to do so, we're going to de-authenticate that client so that they come to us. And essentially, at that point, we capture them and Bob's their uncle or you know, uh, Robert's your mother's brother. So let's dive in and do that. Now, first things first, I'm in my Pine AP settings here, and I want to take a look at the configuration that I'm using initially, which is just to capture the client connection and disconnection notifications, as well as to log all of those Pine AP events. I have the daemon enabled. I have it set up to start automatically every time we boot up, and I don't have any of the other dangerous buttons checked at the moment. There's nothing in the pool. Now, if I come over to a scan that I just uh, ran a moment ago, you can see here, we see all of the access points in the area, as well as the clients that are associated to those, which is really the, the the neat part about this scan is we are able to actually understand, you know, what are the relationships between all of these different devices. So similar to your typical site survey where you see the access points, I see this one H5 target, I see its MAC address, I see what its security type is and the channel and, and WPS and all of that other good stuff. But I also see like, hey, there's these three clients that are connected to this H5 target. And in this mock scenario of a wireless engagement, this is going going to be uh, our target and we can come down here and see all of the other um, you know items in the vicinity including the clients that are actually out of range so we're not able to actually uh, get involved with the access point in the client there but we can we know that they're around there we just can't see both of them which is pretty cool as well as all of those devices that are unassociated so these are actually client devices that aren't connected to any access point whatsoever uh, and then you may notice that some of these are slightly more blue than black and that's if we have a pretty good determination that the uh, the MAC address was randomized by that device. So on this particular engagement, we're going to go ahead and say, all right, so we've been tasked with um, with snaring this business traveler for H5 target. And uh, if we click into any of these, you know, you can you can just click on the network and there's things, there's options that we can do to this specific SSID here. So we can even say notes like uh, our uh, target, right? Um, this is the mock business we've been contracted two hacks. Okay, great. And so we can save that little note. Uh, and likewise, we can add these things to the pools or the filters. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click add this AP to the pool. We'll come back to that in a moment and see what that's all about. Uh, we're also going to go into you know the MAC address and you see that it's a little bit different. I can say, hey, this uh, OUI, it's a TP link. You know, So I know what uh, the manufacturer of the access point is at this network H5 uh, target. Uh, and similarly with the handshake, if I wanted to, we could start a, a handshake capture if we wanted to crack the WPA key and things of that nature. Uh, if we go over to the actual clients and click on the little uh, button next to those, we can see information that's specifically to those clients. So just like before, we're given a little bit of information. We know the MAC address, and based on that, we can tell uh, who makes the system. So this particular client, uh, the radio was manufactured by Legra Systems, and uh, that's being told by the OUI, which is the first three octets of the MAC address. And similarly, we can add it to the filters, add it to tracking. We can deauthenticate. The, uh, the client, uh, we can figure out what they're probing for, we can make some little notes. So um, let's say in this mock engagement, we've been tasked with snaring a business traveler at this company that happens to have a Samsung phone and that's the only information that we've been given. So we're gonna use that to make sure that we stay within the scope of engagement and we capture just that client. Because we don't wanna just go into the Pine AP menu and check all of the boxes and then grab everything because that's not what this is for. This is for you know being very specific about this uh, so we're staying within the scope of engagement. So let me show you how to do it right. If we come back over here, so we've got these three clients connected to this H5 target and we've already determined this one's the Legra Systems one. We can go down here and say like, okay, this guy's got a light on uh, radio and then who's this? Ah, uh, look, 
it's a Samsung. Okay, great. So we know that this is probably our business traveler. What do we have? If we come down to the uh, Piney P logged probes, we can hit load and it will show all of the probes that are coming from this device. And as you might have been, uh, guess, okay, let's see, United uh, Wi-Fi in the club and uh, the Southwest Wi-Fi looks like they also stay at the Hilton and uh, Courtyard Marriott's and uh, tra they travel from uh, San Francisco. So this is, we're gonna add a nickname and we're gonna call this Bob and say, Bob's our target, right? So save that note and we can reference this later on uh, throughout the whole uh, Wi-Fi Pineapple Suite. But if we close this, okay, we know now this is our target. So the, the trick is we want to make sure that we're only getting Bob. How do we do that? We do filtering and we need to entice just Bob. So if we go back into that menu we were just in, you can see there's a couple options. First thing is we're going to add this MAC address to our filter. So we just click that and then similarly uh, we're going to uh, add all of these probes that they were looking for all of these to the Pine AP pool. So we're gonna take a look here in just a moment what that means. So we get notification that's been added, great. So let's close that for just a moment and uh, go into our other tab here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and refresh. Uh, actually, what we're gonna do is go over to filters. So you'll notice that our client, we have client filtering and SSID filtering. And so those two different filters have two specific roles. The client filtering is basically saying, hey, Wi-Fi Pineapple, either don't allow clients with these MAC addresses or only allow clients with these MAC addresses. Similarly, you have the SSID side of the filtering, which says to the Pineapple, hey, don't allow anyone trying to connect to this SSID or alternatively, only allow clients trying to connect to this SSID. So in this case, what we're going to say is, hey, Wi-Fi Pineapple, we only want the MAC address of this Samsung device, of this business traveler that we've been contracted to hacks, and uh, we only want it to be allowed to connect, which means if your name isn't this guy, you can't connect. Uh, so that's what this mode is right here where it says allow. So it's in allow mode, which means it's only going to allow this device. Now, if we were to click the switch button, it basically would say everyone is allowed to connect except for this device. So we don't want that. We want it in allow mode. Similarly, if we wanted to, we could start, you know, putting in SSIDs like, you know, I don't know, um, uh, example, right? And so if we added that example, that means that if this device we're looking for, or any device really, we're looking for example, it would not allow them to connect to example. Or if we switched it, it would only allow them to uh, connect to example. Now here's the thing, we actually don't care uh, what the, this client is looking for. We have the, the client filtering set to allow mode. We have just the MAC address of our client listed in there. So we're just gonna go ahead and hit, uh, select example, hit remove, and we're gonna go ahead and leave the SSID filtering blank because we really don't care what he connects to as long as he connects, all right? So with that, with our filtering set up so that we're only getting that guy, well, let's take a look at our Pine AP settings. Now before, when we were in that recon scan and we added those SSIDs to pool, they collect here. So what this means is this checkbox right here, and I'm not gonna hit save settings yet, but I'm gonna just check the box so we know what we're talking about. This broadcast SSID pool, what that means is essentially all of the things listed on that SSID pool are what the Wi-Fi pineapple is going to start beaconing out and say, hey, I'm H5 Target, I'm United Club, I'm United Wi-Fi, I'm Southwest Wi-Fi and H Honors and Courtyard Lobby and Marriott Guest and SSFO Free Wi-Fi and everything else that's in that list. And so you can see that we very specifically uh, uh, created a list here based on our target. There's another way that you can populate this list and that is to check this box right here that says capture SSIDs to pool. If we were to check this box, what it would mean is while the recon scans are going on, or actually just not even while recon scans are going on, while the Wi-Fi pineapple is online, it's always sniffing the airwaves and it's always looking for those probes from all devices. So with that checkbox checked, it's going to put every SSID it sees into this SSID pool, the, the big old pot of honey, right? 
And depending on your engagement, this big old pot of honey may be very different than somebody else's because you may have a very specific target in mind. So uh, using open source tools like wiggle.net is a great resource to go and find the SSIDs of your particular target of interest, which geographically are going to be different. You know, when I was uh, uh, hacking with Jason Street in Lebanon, the SSIDs that the people at that bank were looking for were very different than the kinds of SSIDs that you would expect, you know, uh, uh, tech in San Francisco to be looking for, for example. And uh, this business traveler here is a great example of just that. So it, with that said, we've got our SSID pool set up. We're going, we have broadcast SSID pool set, which means that the Wi-Fi pineapple is now going to mimic all of those. We're also going to check beacon response. And so what that does is it helps solidify the legitimacy of the Wi-Fi pineapple's rogue access point by continuously beaconing back specifically to our target that, hey, not only did I reply to your probe request when you asked, hey, is, is such and such network around? And I said, yeah, I'm such and such. I'm, going to continuously put out beacons that say, I'm such and such. And that's uh, a an, an really cool, unique feature to the Wi-Fi pineapple and uh, really helps uh, you know sell the, the rogue access point to this, uh, this client here. So all right, with all of those checked, the last box to check is kind of the danger mode checkbox, which is allow associations. Now, it's not that much of a danger mode because of the way that we've set up our filters. The only people that are going to be allowed to associate to the Wi-Fi pineapple is Bob, our target. So no big deal. I'm going to go ahead and click Save Settings. And so now the Wi-Fi Pineapple starts broadcasting the SSID pool. It starts reinforcing those with beacon responses. Uh, actually, I don't want Capture SSIDs to pull because that's going to get everybody else in addition to this. If I, if, I hit, if I check this box and sit here hitting Refresh on SSID pool, it's just going to grow and grow and grow. Uh, so we're just going to use these. And with that now, let's go ahead and see if we can get Bob. If I come to clients, we don't have any clients connected to the Wi-Fi Pineapple. But if I go back to my recon scan and select him, we know that Bob is uh, connected to this access point. So since we're on a uh, mock engagement where we've been authorized to do so, we're going to be allowed to do a deauthentication attack. So that's within the scope of engagement on this particular particular mock engagement and uh, what that means is we're going to send frames that pose as if they are the legitimate access point and they're going to tell the client, hey, get lost. And our deauthentication system is really robust and it uh, works on a multiplier system. So what that means is if you do, uh, if you select here a multiplier of two, it's going to send twice as many deauthentication packets. If you do 10, it's going to send 10 times as many deauthentication packets. How many packets do we send? We send enough. I'm just going to leave it at two. I'm going to go ahead and click deauthenticate. And what that's going to do is kick that client off the network. And, um, and once they do, you know, most devices, you can see it's throbbing here with little pineapple thing uh, showing that it's uh, sending those packets. Most of these devices are then going to say like, oh, okay, I've, um, you know, been disconnected from Wi-Fi. No big deal. I'm just going to go ahead and continue looking for Wi-Fi until it's available and then connect. So what do you think is going to happen in this case? So as you might imagine, if we come back over to our clients tab, yep, in fact, we have that client. So hey, look, it's Bob our target and only Bob's been allowed to join. He's got an IP address on our Wi-Fi Pineapples network. And there you go. Uh, if we were able to get host name or SSID information, that would show up right here. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But in any event, that client thinks they're connected to one of the access points in their preferred network list, but they're not. They are indeed connected to the Wi-Fi Pineapple, which is fantastic for us because now on our engagement, we can use many of the different Wi-Fi Pineapple modules or really since we've got the power of an embedded Linux system under the hood, we could do any of the normal networking stuff that we'd want to as we are now literally the man in the middle. In fact, since I'm doing this on my Kali box, I've got the internet flowing through my Kali box. This, connect, this client is connected through my Kali box. I can just go ahead and fire up, you know, um, any of the man in the middle uh, tools or even just Wireshark and, and analyze this traffic to my heart's content. And that's kind of the very bare bones basic workflow to snare a specific individual and how the Pine AP suite really shines in this regard. So with all of that, we're going to check in here on our Hack5 Gear giveaway. But first, we're going to take a quick break and thank our sponsor. 
Domain.com has all of your website needs from .com and .net to intuitive website builders. Create your online identity with their affordable, reliable tools. Even brand yourself with over 300 extensions from .club to .space. Domain.com loves Hack5, which is why you get 15% off domain names, hosting, and email when you check out with coupon code HACK5. When you think domain names, think domain.com. Now, if you'll recall from last week, we had a really fun, simple payload just to do some security awareness stuff with the USB rubber ducky. And we ran this command on our Windows victim box and it just basically runs tree over and over and over. And I have to say, you know, mad props to Alan Pereira P who recommended simply hitting alt enter, which would be literally alt space enter in ducky script and would do this, which if you're not familiar, alt enter, Obviously, full screen, so much scarier than a little command window, oh yeah. But it doesn't end there, I also have to give mad props to Elijah Aldap, who suggested as a crazy one-liner this eye-opener that basically endlessly runs the start command, which I love the start command, it can be used to do so many beautiful things, but if you just run start in a command prompt, it's going to open a command prompt. So uh, we'll go ahead and close this guy and I'll show you what it, what I mean. I've got it here in my uh, history and essentially it's just like before doing this for slash L which is going to go ahead and do our infinite loop but instead of tree we're going to run the start command and actually you know what I'm going to open up the task manager before we do this and make it always on top and pop up that performance chart because this is a ridiculous one. And that is pretty wicked. So I've reached out to both of you to hook you up with $100 Hack5 gift cards so you can grab your own USB rubber ducky or Wi-Fi pineapple. And if you would like some awesome Hack5 gear, check out the specials we've got going over in the shop at hack5.org. And let me know your favorite Wi-Fi pineapple story in the comments below to be entered to win the Hack5 gear giveaway next week. Full details, hack5.org slash contest. With that, I'm Darren Kitchen. Trust your techno lust. <laughs>